Hi, I'm Wayne Lewis and I'm with Oracle's Linux and Virtualization team. I'm here to give a brief demonstration about our new version of Oracle VM, Oracle VM 3.2.1. So the first thing is to quickly review the architecture which is this slide. And here we see that we have servers that are installed on the bare metal and we have a manager which installs on top of Oracle Linux on another server somewhere. We can access shared storage and multiple network types. I'm now going to give a demonstration uh, live of Oracle VM Manager 3.2.1. So first of all I'm logging into the Oracle VM Manager and this is a first time installation so I'm going to hide the help button and I first thing I'm going to do is discover the two Oracle VM servers that I've already installed. So I put in the agent password and I tell it to go and scan the IP addresses that I've already given the management networks for the Oracle VM servers I've previously installed. So now it goes away and scans those systems, identifies the types and brings them into the OVM manager database. So they're now called unassigned servers. We still see the information but they're not actually owned by this OVM manager yet. So first thing we do is we see that we can see that it's identified the network, that's the management network, and then we need to actually go and find some storage. So the important thing here is when you use Storage Connect plugins, which we provide, and are provided by third-party vendors for their storage products, these are actually used by the OVM servers themselves to go and find the storage. So we're going to create a storage uh, connection to a SAN, which in this case is a free NAS device. So it's an iSCSI device that we're using, and we can use the generic iSCSI plugin. We need to add the filer itself, so obviously we just give it the IP address and the port and any other connection settings that we need to connect to our filer. In this case, it's just the IP address because it's a standard iSCSI interface. And then once we've done that, we're going to uh, implement tell it which admin servers we're going to use, so the two servers that we discovered, and then we will add the, bridge, uh, the connectors. So we're now seeing the initiators from the OVM servers. We're going to add those to the collection that are able to access this SAN device that we've just created. So we've just implemented the SAN device. It's gone away and found the server. It's polling it right now to find out what information it's got inside it. And then it's attaching it to the OVM servers using the initiators that we discovered. So we've actually now connected our free NAS box directly to our OVM servers. They have discovered two LUNs that are available, so I've created two LUNs previously. And these LUNs are available to both of the Oracle VM servers that we discovered. So the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to create a server pool. And we're going to create a server pool containing these two OVM servers. And we're going to create a clustered server pool, which means that it's available for high availability. In other words, VMs can be marked as highly available, and if one of the nodes in the cluster fails, they'll get restarted. Those VMs will get restarted on another node in the cluster. So we give it a virtual IP address. Every server pool has to have a virtual IP address. And I'm going to change the default keyboard layout because I'm in Britain. And I'm going to select, obviously, to use an OVM Zen-based hypervisor rather than a Spark-based. But as you can see, OVM Manager 3.2.1 can actually manage Spark servers as well in the same interface. I'm going to change the timeout for the cluster because I'm actually using a virtualized NAS box. And I don't want a timeout. So I'm selecting a 13 gigabyte LUN so that I can create my server pool file system, which is used by the cluster as a quorum disk. I'm going to add my servers into the environment. So these are the two servers that I want to have in the server pool. And it's going to add these servers into the pool as it creates them. So it's creating a cluster pool file system, it's creating a cluster, and it's yeah, putting both of the OVM servers that we asked into the cluster. So there they go. We now have a new server pool. It's a cluster server pool, and it contains the two OVM servers. So they are now owned by this uh, OVM manager. They're now bound to it through their UID and can no longer be accessed or controlled by any other OVM manager.
So here we can see the other facilities that we have, including the policies. So this is where we can define whether or not a cluster takes part in distributed resource scheduling or dynamic power management. And we can do that for CPU and network resources as well. And then we can also see any events that are associated directly with the server pool. We can acknowledge those events if we need to. And here we see that it's a brand new pool, obviously, so we've got no virtual machines. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, actually create some virtual NICs. So these are the NICs that we're connecting to virtual machines. And we need to create a pool of those so that we can use those in the future. You can actually create them on demand, but if you create them up front, it just saves a step. So the next thing we're going to do is actually add a virtual machine network. So we see that we have five network channels of which virtual machines is one but it's not actually automatically associated with the management network. So we're going to create a new virtual machine network allocating both servers and as you can see I have NICs in both those machines which I'm applying to this network. So I've now got two networks. I've got a management network and a virtual machine network. I've got most of the channels are associated with the management network and I've got the virtual machine networks connected direct to their own channel. So the next thing I'm going to do is create a repository so I can store virtual machine files and virtual machine disks. So I need to create a new repository. I'm going to select again a virtual, a physical disk from my SAN. So I select that LUN, I create it and I ask it to be a storage repository and at this point I allocate the machines that are able from the pool to access this repository because you can have multiple repositories and different machines can access different repositories if you want to. And once we've done that, you'll see that it's created my repository and it created the file structure underneath in order uh, to store different aspects of uh, virtual machines, virtual disks, config files, templates, rip, um, interfaces and so on. So right now, I'm going to go through and I'm going to create a virtual machine. So I create a virtual machine, and it'll bring me up the dialog to create a virtual machine. And rather than selecting from a template, because I don't have any, I'm going to create a brand new virtual machine. I'm going to actually pixie boot this virtual machine. So I have a pixie boot somewhere, server somewhere else, so I'm going to show you how to create that. So I select the operating system that's going to be inside it. I'm going to let it use with any server uh, uh, inside my device, and I'm going to make sure that it's a... Uh, a uh, Zen HVM with PD device drivers. This is so that I can use a Pixie boot because PV guests by default, uh, or PV guests are the uh, lowest resource requirement virtual machine type, uh, but they can't be Pixie booted. So I've allocated a gigabyte of memory and one processor. I'm going to allocate a NIC from my virtual pool, and now I need to create a virtual disk for the boot disks. So I can either select a physical LAN or a virtual disk that I've already got available. In this case, I'm going to create a virtual disk ready to be used. So it doesn't need to be very large, so I'm going to create a six gigabyte boot disk. I'm going to rem keep it a sparse allocation so it only takes up the space that is initially required to fill the file system and then it'll grow as data gets put into the file system. I'm going to make it a pixie boot, so I have disk as the first hard disk and then pixie as the second, and this means when it does a first boot, it will uh, find nothing in the disk, there's no boot block, and start doing a pixie boot. And immediately we can see I've created the virtual machine, we haven't installed uh, an operating system in it yet, but you can see that I have the information for the networks and the disks uh, and the general configuration. And then I can also see the overall health of my environment uh, from a uh, simple perspective. And I can also see some basic statistics of my environment uh, to audit overall. So thank you very much for listening. And uh, I hope that this gives you a good introduction to OVM Server 3.2.1. Thank you. Bye-bye.